Hey you wonderful people, we're here to review Kingdom Chapter 542. It's a really good chapter this time around, especially by the end. So this chapter starts out with all the left wing armies of Zhao attacking the right wing of Quinn, to the point that they're locking down the Aku army and Ohan's army. They are absolutely in control of the flow of the battle at the start of this chapter. And Osun sees this and he actually draws concern that this is dangerous, so he calls for a messenger. And I'm going to save that for later because I am pretty sure uh, it ties in with something else at the end of the chapter. Now Ohan sees an opportunity to flank the Goyuan army with a detachment to help free up the Aku army so that the Goyuan and the rest of the Zhao armies aren't completely de dictating the battle. So while Ohan is flanking the Guan army, he realizes that they are quite prepared for something like this, that uh, they are clearly ready to fight a flank like this, so he tells his detachment to about face that they'll find somewhere else to go. But while they are retreating, that adjutant Banyu was dismounted and that he is surrounded by enemies. Uh, while Banyu is yelling, just go, forget about me, protect Han Sama, uh, Ohan turns around and says, we're going back. All the while, Banyu's thinking, why, no, no, this isn't happening. And he's about to get killed and stabbed and he says, thinks this is all, all good because then uh, Ohan will turn back around and keep going. Okay, we're in some meat now where we can actually discuss and not just recap. So, Banyu and Ohan. I think they're pro- Ohan is pro- Banyu is probably the closest person to Ohan, and Ohan's probably the closest person to Banyu, I'm thinking. And if I recall correctly, Banyu trained Ohan when he was younger. And Ohan turning around to risking his life to save Banyu just proves it to me that there is something there because no offense but Banyu is not an exceptional soldier that dying would be him getting killed would be a great loss to his army so he sac so Ohan is risking soldiers and himself to save someone that has sentimental value to him which is really nice and it humanizes Ohan but <laughs> I had the last page of this chapter, it almost, I'm going to save it for a little bit later, but it makes me wonder something. So next is, Shin shows up along with Koyukai, and they save the day, they save Bayu, and Ohan sees this. Now, you know, Shin says, hey, I'm here to give you a hand, Ohan, but Ohan, he has a look and his... There's even a bubble that says clench where you can see that Ohan is clenching and tensing up. Now there's a few reasons I see that he would be tense because one, I, uh, when I said before that Osin uh, was getting a messenger, well I'm pretty sure the messenger was to go contact Shin and have him go to the right wing and help Ohan or at least help the right army. And Ohan is the one who gave the order to retreat, so he may be feeling guilty for the one putting Banyu in that position and not being strong enough to save him, which would make him feel guilty and angry at Shin for being the one who saved him. You, Most people would be thankful, but you know, Ohan, he's arrogant. And Sometimes that can make you angry that you didn't do it yourself. And that brings me back to what I was saying about Ohan that, well, I think it could, but I would be crazy. <sighs> I hope to God not, but he could be, like, this image, this image right here could show that he's starting to go down the path of, like, Sasuke Uchiha in Naruto. And I would not want that. I would not want Shin to be the hero that's happy and Ohan end up being the emo, uptight uh, Sasuke that wasn't strong enough to stop his uh, friend or mentor from dying. And not to mention the lack of faith from Osin because Osin sent Shin to help. 
I think I'm probably just blowing things out of proportion with those thoughts, but it's always a possibility, so just gotta put out my thoughts. Well guys, that wraps up this chapter. As always, fortune be with you.